respect borders, that is the authoritarian, violent regimes. regimes. Here, uh, we will focus the debate on our future, the future of the free world and our planet on four stages with the participation of almost 300 guest speakers. So we would like to invite you to get included in this broad and open discussion. During the Freedom Games today, green color is the main color. You can see it around you. Green color is also the color of hope. Together, we are building a new story about our future, which hopefully will be used for the deep and uh, permanent uh, future, change in future. It's uh, our logistic uh, effort of Liberty Foundation and co-partners who, who are supporting our uh, event. We are grateful and moved that the Freedom Games have so many friends. It wouldn't be possible without them to organize an event of such a scale, of such diversity. Today, in a moment, on this stage, we will be able to thank them with uh, our rounds of applause. But we will start with Boże Lenkowski, who is the president of the board of the Liberty Foundation and the director of, of Freedom Games. So Boże Lenkowski, please, the floor is yours. Please uh, welcome and officially open this year's Freedom Games. Boże Lenkowski, president of the board of the Liberty Foundation and the director of the Freedom Games. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to the next edition of the Freedom Games. We are meeting in the circumstances which are even um, more difficult than last year. The pandemic uh, was only the pretaste of the new uh, reality. And the, uh, the beginning of the this year was the barbarian attack of Russians uh, against Ukraine on the 24th of February. So throughout my adulthood, my generation, it seems that uh, the, the good times are becoming the past. So uh, we need to face great challenges. This is the time for the green independence. Ukraine has to survive. If Kiev uh, will be deprived of the right of independence, uh, the world order will be eroded and the war chaos uh, will cover other states and regions. It's our great uh, responsibility as the neighbor to help Ukraine. This is our uh, uh, reason uh, of state. Today, uh, the topic of Ukraine is is, uh, is the topic for all of us. We have to be military ready to defend our freedom and values. It's also the last bell for the green uh, transformation, which will make the independent state, uh, state uh, uh, dependent on the fossils. The green transformation is the green independence and our cli uh, climate and ecology targets uh, should combine all, us, all, all of us, irrespective of our political differences. The challenges con concerning this transformation and green development require long-term actions. We are facing major challenges in terms of security. Green, uh, that there are changes in the energy sector, and it, this combined with the probably um, biggest economic crisis that will cover Poland since uh, 70s, 80s. We have to be ready for major solutions, uh, sorry, challenges. And we cannot remember the problems with the rule of law, the human rights, and the standards of democracy in Poland. We do hope that in a few months' time, in this field, there will be this change. At the same time, when we think of the future, uh, we start uh, being uh, frightened. On the one hand, it's not strange, but it's very dangerous. Oh, fears uh, facilitate different dangerous ideologi ideologies and populism. So in these dif difficult times, we need hope, solutions, and responsibility even more. It is necessary that we should take care of ecology forests. We should uh, counteract smog and uh, be against industrial farming. And we should help to stop the climate changes. The biggest uh, challenge is the energy transformation. It requires huge investments. 
in, in the face of the green transformation, the Western societies are in the privileged position. That is why it is of key importance that we uh, agree the sustainable uh, development with the responsibility for the planet. And no uh, economic development uh, will mean that only the strongest will win and the, the weakest uh, will be protesting. Uh, so uh, we, we need to have the radical change in our life and it will be opposed. So if there is no democratic mandate, it will be difficult. That is why environmental activities have to be based on the democratic mandate. It's the most effective weapon uh, that will be fought against populists. If we cannot agree these ideas with the system that would allow people to dream about the better future and work for the better future, they will be marginalized politically. That is why we shouldn't ask whether we need growth or capitalist uh, economy efficient economy that will allow us to tackle uh, poverty. We should ask how to agree the economic goals uh, with the necessary fight against the uh, climate crisis. The new pure uh, clean technologies are necessary. We also need the politics of hope, dames uh, uh, and gentlemen for these times that will be very difficult. It is time to say goodbye to populists. We should also respond to the uh, crisis uh, in solidarity. These hopes for the better future should be also shared with other people, especially uh, with our neighbors in Ukraine. This hope for our support, economic assistance, military assistance. We should also give something more. We should give a long-term perspective uh, to, to, to have the society have better lives. So once, uh, once, once the war is uh, over, and it is hopefully won by Ukraine, it, Ukraine should immediately become a member state of NATO to guarantee uh, security and peace after the war. Ladies and gentlemen, the Games is the forum of new ideas, discussions, and experts' recommendations, which hopefully uh, will allow us to uh, choose a positive image of the future. And we will be able to see that there are solutions and pathways to follow. To end, I would like to thank very much my great team that have prepared the biggest edition of the Freedom Games in history. Olga Wagbendowicz, Joanna Głodek, Natalia Banaś, Stanisław Roszczyk, Maria Posiadało, Marcin Małecki, Julia Maciejewska. Thank you the producer Agnieszka Durmaj and her team. Thank you to Magda Baran Magda Leszczyk and Leszek Jaszczewski, of course. I would like to welcome all the subcontractors and co uh, and cooperants. I would like to thank all the speakers and guests of this year's edition. Over three, 400 people will uh, have the presentation, so it's the biggest edition of the Freedom Games. I would like uh, to say thank you to the pan partners. The strategic uh, partner of this year's edition is the City of Łódź. I would like to say thank you to uh, to uh, Maya uh, Zdanowska, I would like to say thank you to Frederick Nauman Foundation, Atlas Network with uh, White, Wildland Radical Exchange, Google o uh, Open Society, uh, Elf, uh, uh, Amazon, IKEA, uh, Economic Freedom Foundation, Incredible Velox Orange, our substantive uh, partners include Foreign Liberty EU, European Council on Foreign Relations, uh, European Committee of Regions, Forum, Forum of Dialogue, Battery Foundation, Fundacja of uh, Foundation po Project Poland, uh, European Committee for Region, the Godnik Powszechny Foundation, Professor Gieramek's Foundation, Dialogue Forum Foundation, Greenpeace, uh, Civil Institutes, Hill Poland, uh, the, the Committee for uh, the Social Catalog, Viva Foundation, ba Batory Foundation, the Parliament of Young People in Poland, UNICEF, European Council of Foreign Re Relations. Uh, contact magazine, uh, watch uh, track of women, and the uh, 
kryzyka polityczna. I think it's a unique group of experts uh, who have very diverse uh, uh, views, and it's great. And thank you for being with us. The net, uh, Green Cafe Nero is the ne Onet Gazeta Wyborcza Talk FM, książki, magazyn do czytania, Newsweek, Angora, Toya TV, publication partners, wydawnictwo literackie, Watch City Library, ciekawe e, liczby, e, Space for Education, Tour de Constitution and the Free School, the additional uh, event is artwork uh, and organizers are in uh, include Invedo High Blue Rank Binder Ups. So have fruitful discussions and I also hope that we are watched uh, by the uh, through the uh, streaming. I would like to notice that within the last uh, 10 days uh, uh, that the, the movies, the videos from the uh, late last edition uh, were reviewed by many people. So I think it shows that we are doing something really uh, important uh, and uh, uh, useful. So uh, this was a very impressive list of partners for logistics, organization, support, media, and it deserves a huge round of applause. So let's keep our hands warm and let's thank them for co-organizing this great event. And now I would like to give the floor to Hanna Stanowska, who is the mayor of Łódź. When we are talking about the Freedom Games, immediately think uh, of the city of Łódź. So three words, uh, Freedom Games, Łódź, Mayor Stanowska, Hanna Stanowska. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the ninth time that I'm meeting you. I must say, hope is rising in me. The games give hope that the world around us can change. There are people who are willing to make change. Each great change begins with a small step. The Freedom Games, as I believe the greatest event of its sort in Central Eastern Europe prove that an event is hosted in which that allows for talks, clashes of worldviews, working out new ideas so important for this world. Boisje has just said a lot about where we are at this very moment. I wasn't aware several years ago when I started my job as the mayor that in a short time we would face the pandemic something that seemed to be the worst of the worst turned out to be insignificant compared to what the world is facing today the war right behind our border is the war of the worlds. It's not the war in Ukraine only. It is a war that has shown that whatever seems stable is not. It is enough to have one person with different views and aspirations, somebody who doesn't win, want to respect other people's freedom, the right to make their own decisions so vital for them and those huge decisions regarding the shared world. Boise has said so many nice world. I will only invite you to participate in these extraordinary events. The pandemic is followed by war. Now, the energy crisis is knocking on our doors and together with the climate crisis we have had for some time, something that may seem incoherent, yet all that is one coherent challenge in front of us. Let's participate, let's dispute, but let's find and let me repeat it, it's so important to find shared or joint visions 
and actions that need to be taken. They cannot wait. I wish you great talks, great thoughts and good decisions for all of us that may come out from your discussions. Let's shape a good vision we would like to have for Poland, the world, when this craze comes to an end. All the best to you. Thank you for being here. I hope you will leave this city full of hope, because this green color gives us hope that we can change the world, that we can make the world a better place to live. Thank you. Madam Mayor, thank you for being with us. And we are looking ahead into the future. Let me invite uh, the representative of Friedrich Neumann uh, Foundation for Freedom, Detmar Döring. Well. course irrelevant is perhaps seen by us all as more even more relevant than ever the war waged by Putin's Russia against Ukraine has I think uh, made it for everyone clear what is at stake that we have a struggle between freedom and serfdom and that it has gone into a new dramatic phase and a very, very existential one, perhaps the first really existential one since uh, 1989. And perhaps it was a wake-up call for many. People are more, in general, aware of what is at stake. But on the other hand, the war is only one of the many very dangerous crises that the free world is uh, facing now, I'm afraid, simultaneously. The energy crisis, it was mentioned, partly a result of the war. Then climate change, the general topic of this uh, conference. But also the overaging of Western societies and the dangers for uh, lavishly equipped welfare states. Inflation as a result of lavish rescue packages and loose monetary policies, uh, stagnation in world tr trade order uh, that we see, uh, and I could enumerate many, of course, COVID, which has seen the most dramatic uh, personal uh, restrictions of personal freedom we have perhaps seen for decades. So a crisis that seldom ever creates an atmosphere where freedom can flourish. A multiple crisis is even less likely to do so. So the government is on the rise, sometimes with authoritarian tendencies. Debts are soaring. Freedom of expression in many countries is under fire. We see a return of protectionism, which may be in the long term very, very harmful for our wealth, but also for our personal freedoms. And of course, a question, I think, also in the long run of war and peace. You see, there are many indices that measure freedom, freedom hours, human freedom index, and we see they all share the same view. Even before the invasion of the Ukraine, we saw a dramatic decline of freedom. So we have to be careful, thoughtful, and have to preserve our freedoms in such dramatic times. And the most basic precondition for this is to retain openness. A more open society is always more innovative uh, in the solution of crisis, even if it doesn't appear so in the first place. Freedom-based solutions, market solutions, technically innovative solutions, competitive solutions always work better, better than a monopolistic uh, uh, autocratic solution. And this brings me now back to this place here, 
to the very model of open discourse. And that is, to me, the Freedom Games. It's always good to see that you have here controversial measures, uh, matters discussed from different angles with people of all sorts of political backgrounds, which in other countries and other places you hardly ever see talk to each other, sometimes even uh, uh, being averse to each other. And that's very, very important. I think we're about to face a lose of a culture of discussion in this world, and here it is still alive. So the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, and I'm the head of the uh, Central European office in Prague, was always happy to support this event for years, we know. And it's uh, uh, somehow, yeah, I'm beginning to be repetitive, perhaps, because I will now say something that I said last year, that I said the year before, unfortunately only digitally, but the year before and many, many other years before when I made my opening speeches, I have seen over decades many freedom events, but Freedom Games is still my favorite. So my thanks also to Fundatia Liberté that organized it, especially Olga and Blase, uh, with whom we cooperated not only here on Freedom Games, but on many other creative projects, and I'm so grateful to these. Uh, allow me these personal remarks, because uh, we will continue to support the Freedom Games, but probably this is, these are my last opening remarks, because next year in summer I will retire, and somebody else will be doing it happily, I'm quite sure. Uh, so, uh, but I think the Freedom Games are not, not just something professional for me as the head of an office, of a foundation or so, uh, but it's a matter of the heart. So probably next year I will be not be standing here, but maybe I will spook, be, be spooking around here and listen to it because, uh, and that's my final <laughs> remark to, to, uh, to it, I cannot think of a life without a yearly dose of Freedom Games. And with this, I wish you a wonderful and inspiring event. Thank you. Thank you. Bardzo dziękujemy. My też Thank nie umiemy sobie much. wyobrazić roku bez... A year without the dose of Freedom Games and whatever is happening here. Hilde Wautzmann the president of the European Liberal Forum.
The next person who will speak is Tom G. Palmer, who is Executive Vice President for International Programs at Atlas Network. Mr. Palmer, the floor is yours. with so many freedom champions of Poland who are standing tall for your freedom and for the freedom of others. Liberty is absolutely central to the history of the Polish nation. From the participation of Polish patriots, such as Tadeusz Kosciuszko and Kazimir Pulaski in the American Revolution and in the fight for independence of the colonies, to their return to Poland to fight for Polish independence, to the uprising of 1831, to the Polish air squadrons of the Royal Air Force, to today. Poles have fought Zanasza i Wasza Wolność, in my case, with apologies for my terrible Polish pronunciation. The fight against Russian aggression in Ukraine is not a tribal war against another invading tribe. It's a fight for liberty, for democracy. Our Ukrainian friends are fighting for very tangible goals, for their children, for their land, for their lives. And at the same time, they're fighting for an ideal, the ideal of a free and open society where everyone can live without fear of the rulers, without fear of arbitrary power, without fear of persecution because of one's language, race, gender, sexuality, or religion. Before I left COVID quarantine in Turkey, where I had fallen sick, and flew immediately to Warsaw on March 1, I'd been setting up through Zoom calls and emails contacts with Polish liberals who were already working on behalf of the lives and the liberties of your Ukrainian neighbors. And after I landed, I was so impressed by the wide array of Poles who stood up for what is right including people whose normal paths and everyday lives might not intersect. Traditional church-going people alongside gay activists. Poor students alongside successful business people. An international network who had gathered together here in Poland of Poles and Germans, Czechs and Slovaks, Hungarians and Romanians, Swedes, Americans, Canadians, Mexicans, and others, all inspired by the desire to help people who are under bombardment, invasion, and genocide. And all of them working together, Zanasza i Wasza Wolność. Our partners in Poland, including Fundacja Liberté, which won the 2020 Europe Liberty Award, in Warsaw in May, are on the front lines of the struggle for liberty. Your struggle for the rule of law, for an open and tolerant society, for opportunity, for free markets, for liberal democracy and the rule of law is an inspiration to people around the world. Please allow me to add to my admiration, also an encouragement. I encourage you to be optimists, not because we have infallible knowledge of the future and therefore we know everything will turn out okay. The philosopher Karl Popper explained well that that foreknowledge, which the Marxists had foolishly claimed, was impossible. The future is unknowable. I encourage optimism, not because I know now that liberalism will banish oppression and lawlessness, brutality, but because I know that together 
We will work to make it so. The future is open. It will be what we manage to make of it. Pessimism, in contrast, is self-fulfilling. When you think you will fail, you almost certainly will fail. It is always the optimists who make the future. And I'm sure that you, like me, are determined to be optimists. It's truly an honor for Atlas Network to support Freedom Games, and it is personally an honor for me to be among you. Dziękujemy pięknie. The next partner of our event is Google, and now I would like to give the floor to Marcin Olender, who is the manager of government relations and public policies for Central and Eastern Europe at Google. Thank you very much. Good evening. It is a great pleasure and honor to be the supporting partner for the next time here at the Freedom Games. As you could hear, this is a unique event that is a huge meeting of people who love liberty to talk about challenges, perspectives, and threats. You may ask why we would support this event, why the idea of freedom is so important to us. Well, I will not exaggerate if I say that Google is a child of freedom, this great eruption of liberty caused by the Internet. All of a sudden, millions and billions of people were able to communicate with the entire world. That was a revolution of a Gutenberg importance. It created an ocean of information for which my company was established because we are trying to deliver this ocean of information in an arranged matter, manner to all the people. This, this explosion of freedom didn't only bring good things, it brought polarizations, frauds, bad content, and recently, in the international context, disinformation, not only about science, but that controlled by authoritarian regimes that are aim at destabilizing our societies. These are harsh, adverse things we have to face, and I trust we will find time to talk about it during these three days and find a solution and a way forward. I would like to appeal uh, on behalf of Google that the solutions we provide never destroy the core of liberty. We may dispute how to combat negative phenomena, but may freedom be always the utmost value. As you heard before, there is the tendency in crisis to restrict liberty. There may be good grounds for that, but please remember, when we have war, aggression behind our Easter border, aggression against peaceful, uh, independent country is a deadly aggression, but it is also an attack on our shared values, freedom included. When solving problems, let's give evidence that freedom is fundamentally good and we can work out solutions that will prove it to the world. I'd like to thank you, uh, uh, Liberté Foundation, for those years of cooperation. Congratulations on this biggest Freedom Games, and I hope it's going to be a time of good meetings. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Galem Foundation, let me invite Julian Zawistowski, the Foundation Director. Good afternoon. Well, it's a difficult task ahead of me. So many f excellent speakers before me. I do not represent a city or an international corporation. So I should say why I am here, perhaps a bit more personally than my four speakers. I am here because I am afraid that our institutions, Polish in particular, but global in general, institutions of liberal democracy, of law, are a danger. Not because there is some abstract threat against them from aliens, but because they evolve too slowly compared to those rapid changes of the world now and here. I would say the changes mainly apply to two fields. F firstly, socio-economic problems are happening so quickly and are so serious that our institution do not follow. On the other hand, this technological revolution has given us a lot of good things, but also brought about changes the institutions are not ready for. I used to work with Polish public institutions. I was a consultant. I ran different projects with them. And a couple of years ago, uh, around 2015, I decided that the escapism was what I needed. I quit my job. I went to the the world of decentralized technology. There I looked for different solutions for institutional problems in a different composition, in a different way, with some success. However, that was a sort of escapism, but we need to solve the problems now here in the institutions we have. And when I was wondering how in this reality that has been uh, catching us, how I could help in this institutional change. I thought that in Poland and Europe in general, there is little knowledge about radical exchange, something that has been growing rapidly in the US. It is sometimes named a radical liberalism or l radical liberal markets. But it's not libertarianism. On the contrary, it is an attempt to put together the concept of freedom, liberalism, including economic one, with a more inclusive approach to decision making. It's a search for what our voting method should be, how to disclose our preferences, or perhaps how to solve this old problem of the Polish cinema, how to choose the voting method. I'd like to invite you to this thematic path, radical exchange, 21st century infrastructure from state capacity to shared capacity. And I'd like to thank Liberté and all the organizers for inviting us, and I wish you the great Freedom Games. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the ninth edition of the Freedom Games, the Green Independence, have been officially opened. Uh, the speakers expressed not only the words of welcome, but the words of gratitude. We have thanked uh, the partners, the organizers, substantive, supportive media partners. We have thanked voluntaries. Without them, this event would be uh, much more difficult to organize. So uh, we would like to thank them cordially. We should also thank 
our Freedom Games audience here in EC1 and in front of their computer screens who are uh, watching us, the, the, the streaming, uh, the, which the, the Freedom Games can be uh, viewed uh, through the website. And as we hear during hip hop concerts, let's make a lot of noise. Let's welcome uh, one another. The audience from EC1 and the audience which are connected via, uh, via fast internet. So welcome to the ninth uh, Freedom Games, the Green Independence. Since everyone has introduced themselves, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Olga Brzezinska and I will have pleasure and honor to accompany you during uh, this three-day journey. And in a moment, we will commence uh, uh, the substantive, the topics the topical session.